today I want to kind of start kind of like a series that's going to go from uh, probably until the end of the year, not including the messages that I'll have someone else teach. I'll talk about that later. But um, it's called Carry Your Cross. And uh, today we're going to talk about a subject that is kind of uncomfortable to a lot of teenagers, but I think that it's important that we touch on it sometimes here. Didn't quite notice about that with the paper. <laughs> um, this is something that uh, <laughs> I've heard a lot of things about uh, this year. Now that I'm in high school, you know, <laughs> I know I heard about it a lot last year, but I'm in high school now, and I think I heard a lot last year. I heard a lot more this year <laughs> about just students in my grade, grades above me, that have pretty much given their lives away at a young age. So, I mean, it's kind of an awkward subject, but I think, like I said, it's important that we talk about it. There are several reasons why I think this is such a problem in high schools, and first of all, I'll just start, I have a few of these written down. I mean, there's temptation, peer pressure, hormones, emotions. I mean, and here's the thing that gets me is I hear a lot of people that say um, that, uh, they really like each other. If they're going to get married when they get out of high school, you don't know that. So, and even if you do, it's not okay to have sex at a young age, both unless you're married. And um, I remember talking to a girl um, earlier on this year. I was talking to two girls. Uh, it was during uh, my phys ed class, and we, I guess the, it was like during the blood drive or whatever. So we were in the cafeteria for a study hall that period. And uh, I was just talking to them. Uh, they saw me reading my Bible. This is another reason why I really hope that you guys have Bibles in your school and that you're reading them. Because people see you with that Bible, and they will know you're a Christian. And if they're interested, they might ask you a few questions like these girls did. Uh, we were actually talking most of the period. They actually started to go to church a few weeks after that. I don't know if they still do. But um, what they were asking was, is it okay if you have sex before marriage as long as it's only with one person? As long as it's only one person your entire life, if you have sex with them now and you get married to them later, and I said, well, let's look at it from a biblical point of view. If you would like to turn to Hebrews 13, 4. Hebrews 13. If you want. Hebrews 13. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Alright, so a few key words in here. Marriage, honorable. That's the first part of that verse. Marriage is honorable. That is when it's okay. When you are married. And, you know, the Bible talks about marriage a little bit. I don't have it written down here, but I know it talks about how you know, the marriage is a commitment before God, between two people. Not, this is not the exact word in the Bible, but no one knows what it says exactly. What's the verse again? Uh, Hebrews 13, 4. But marriage is honorable. That is when God will give you the okay. He said, okay, well, this marriage is okay. Now you can have sex. That's, it, it's in plain letters right in the Bible. It's not okay to form marriage. Marriage is honorable among all, it says. And he says, uh, in the bed undefiled, but wrong mongers, as it says in mine, it you said uh, fornicators, correct? And adulterers, God will judge. And I have the definition right. Down here, fornicators are people that have sex before marriage. All right, so fornicators, that's, I, I've met lots of them in high school this year. I didn't already know, and people I did know became fornicators this year. I know that. I talked to them. And so I told them, no, that's not okay. It is a sin to have sex, even if it's with the same person all your life, if you're not married. So why do you think that's so important? Anybody? Why, why do you think that God needs us to get married before we're allowed to have that bond with somebody? Does anybody want to guess? Yeah. 
Like, it's a picture with, like, Christ and the church. Okay. So, what, what do you mean by that? What, what kind of picture? Marriage is, like, a picture of Christ and the church. It, like, resembles kind of like how the the lamb offering of the Old Testament was a picture of how um, Jesus was dying on the cross. The um, picture of men and women marrying each other is a picture of how Christ loves his church. Okay, that's good. So, here's the thing. Now, did marriage exist before Christ? Yeah. You can read in the Old Testament, it says, and uh, Adam's wife, Eve. Okay, now, obviously, they were the only two on the planet at the time. They had no one to marry them, but it was okay with God. It was, they were married. They were husband and wife. All right, so you got... got one side of the family and the other side you got the father the mother you know if you know if they were to have a child but let's say they're not married yet I mean you've got God looking down here and he doesn't really see like it's a picture of Christ and the church and marriage and everything but what about before Christ when he didn't exist in the church of and you don't have to be a Christian to get married. You've got atheists getting married, Buddhists getting married. And I don't know, I'm not sure, but I think in other religions it's the same concept, like you should get married before your God, whoever it is. And, but even atheists, you know, they get married. They may be not before they have sex, but they do get married. So is marriage a Christian thing? Is abstinence a Christian thing? Or is that just something that Christians do that they don't really own? I mean, what, what do you think it is? Do you think it's just for Christians, or? It depends on how you're looking at it. Now, let's say, oh, I want to name one. I'm not very creative with girl names. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that's the best you can come up with. I couldn't think of it. Mary. But we're talking about her. Mm. Lucy. <laughs> that sounds like Lucifer. Okay. Um, <laughs> Abby. There we go. That's such an old name. Okay. Well, so. Yeah, Bill and Abby. Alright. Let's say you've got. They're both Christians. Then over here, you've got Joe and Jane. This came to me. And they're not Christians. That's so weird ball. <laughs> The guy doesn't have the air. Guys can pull off the ball. Mr. Weaver, Mr. Sainer, Mr. Haven, my uncle, my mom's boyfriend. Okay, anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, this guy has a cooler hat than his. This is kind of like Dr. Seuss, maybe. But, um. So, you got Christians on this side, and let's say atheists on this side. Cross not a T, but. <laughs> um. What does it mean for Christians to get married? I mean, what does that mean? What, what does that have any uh, value to the people? They sort of become one. Like, exactly. They join. They become one. 
All right. Baby. <laughs> kind of looks like baby there, but that's not what their baby would look like. Okay, um, <laughs> you become one. Now, atheists 